Let the peace, love, and blessing of the Almighty God be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Celibacy, its religious support. An everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. Luke chapter 20, verse 35. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they have none. Golden text. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Quote, here is a factual revelation of what has been from time immemorial to be confirmed as true through the passage of time. Though some people may be hungry while others may argue or quarrel over this word, it is not meant to disturb you beyond considering whether you are one of those to follow Christ. They made sacrifices for the love of the kingdom of God. The anxiety ridden and frustrated world is making a last resort to following Christ. There is no other way to make mankind to be saved. Moreover, the position as a saint, apostle, or disciple of Christ holds out a charm for many aspiring Christians. Many people are called out of the world to serve God in order to have a share in the kingdom of God. Among them are those who have made themselves eunuchs for the love of the kingdom of God. Whoever desires to be a child of God should be holy. A fornicator or adulterer is defiled and cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Celibacy has proved a very reliable precautionary measure against defiling oneself with men or women. Though it is obvious that not all people can accept this truth, for those who want to follow Christ, and forsake the whole world, the qualification is holiness. Such a situation is not at all embarrassing if only it is understood to be simply the same as being faced with a choice between marriage and Christ, much as it is between the world and the kingdom of God, or heaven life and or between life and death you may then be going to church every day pass sleepless nights in long prayers place your parcels of prayer requests for a good and beautiful housewife at the sanctuary of god marry or give in marriage but without the full knowledge of choosing Christ is a different thing. Christ, the spotless lamb. Christ is the lamb without blemish, a spotless bridegroom whose virgin attendants are undefiled. Nuptial 
arrangement in which virgins usually follow the bridegroom in this world through natural is symbolic. Though natural is symbolic of the spiritual marriage feast of Christ, to which those undefiled by men or women are the only acceptable attendants. Remember the five foolish virgins. We do not want you to be like them. Where are, where are all? Where all are wishing to follow Christ? All are supposed virgins, but the number of those to meet and actually walk with him are limited as illustrated by the unpreparedness of the five foolish virgins. Whether the story is of virgins without oil in their lamps, or of people without the wedding dress, or those who refuse to attend the wedding feast, one thing is meant to be illustrated, that any person who is defiled with women or men is unprepared and cannot walk with Christ. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, and whosoever defiles his body with women is liable to suffer death. Today's world is filled with hatred, illness, and sorrows caused by sin. Whosoever is not pure is likened unto salt that has lost its silver, good for nothing but to be thrown away and trampled on the feet. Anyone in this condition is already dead. The holy life of the undefiled with women is not only to be envisaged, but practiced as done by saints both living and of blessed memory. When Saul became Paul, he counted for nothing everything, including marriage, wishing that his examples be followed. He wrote, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ? Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. Peter and the other disciples left everything and followed Christ. They remained for Christ, pure and undefiled in marriage. Prophetess Anna, an undefiled widow for 84 years. Prophetess Anna married for seven years. Then her husband died, and she remained and died a widow, undefiled for 84 years. Why then should some women say that they could not do without lovers? God is love, health, joy, and life. It is therefore foolish to condemn as harmful or inconvenient any condition that fashions our bodies for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, Christ and God. Some prelates and laymen who have understood this gospel have successfully taken to celibacy for the same reason as Paul, Peter and Anna. Truth is bitter. But we are not to hide any truth which has been highly acceptable to those who are anxious to gain the kingdom of God. Christ is walking about here on earth, but you cannot see him because you profane your bodies with men and women. My dear brethren, 
let everybody big or small search within themselves whether they have a share in eternal life all those who are married look distressed at this word this is not time for weeping or writing petition to the author of the word all those who are destined to live and the resurrection from the dead are preserved by God. That is why those who are unfortunate in marriage should rejoice instead of lamenting over their ill luck. To them, eternal life with Christ means more than compensation. It is a prize of triumphant life. It is the fulfillment of the highest Christian idea of living for Christ and for Christ alone. Following Christ does not respect age or sex. We are simply asked to remain undefiled by men or women. You may have heard some people argue that the kingdom of God is not for women or youth. This may stem from the observation that women and youths are most carnally inclined than elderly people. But God is no respecter of persons. Mary was a young virgin. Paul a youthful man. In Acts chapter 21 verses 8 to 9, it is recorded that Philip the evangelist in Caesarea had four daughters, virgins, who did prophecy. There is a way out for all those who are married already. A lot of what we regard as pleasurable are dead. In order that our work as Christians may not be a waste, let us hear what the scripture says. Whenever you practice the word, even in a hundred years, only then will you see Christ. There is no wife, husband, church, or government that can help. Only individual determination can. Golden text, Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Different defilement. A stumbling block to many Christians. The 144,000 who will follow Christ wherever he goes are those who have cut the time short to remain undefiled with women or men. Let nobody deceive you that there is any other condition if Adam and Eve did not defile themselves, they would not die, and there would be no want. You will be duly rewarded for whatever good work you do. Paying of tithes, feeding the poor, visiting the sick, and so on. But if you want to follow Christ, you must be undefiled by women or men. Following Christ is no joke, but what is impossible with man is possible with God. Pray that God will help you to remain undefiled by women or men. Know that Christ is here with us. If we open the door for him, he will come in and dwell with us, and we in him so that we may be heirs.
together for eternal life. A stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. Let those who has ears to hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the entire world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.